Hello. Hello. How are, how is everybody? Well, yes. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> still here. Good, good. So we're still admitting people. It's a little bit early, but um, if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them for you. Question. Okay. As big as we can get it. Or is there a full screen? Or... Oh, I think that's as big as we can get it. View? Okay. Side by side gallery, side by side speaker, standard. It's on side by side gallery. Just a question. Can everybody hear me? I'm always wondering that though. Just... Yeah. All right, great. <laughs> We're not on mute, right? What is this? We're on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. I can hear you. Yes. Okay, this is Bill Gaze. I'm just struggling trying to find my camera to turn on. But I'm Hi, Bill. How are you? Oh, alrighty. When you, someone says, how are you? I say, oh, it's all relative compared to when. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. So where on the screen is my little is my camera? I'm not really a Zoomer. Um, uh, Bill, you don't have your camera on. But I wouldn't sweat it too much, though, because um, it's, it's okay. I mean, if you, if you really want to put it on, um, it, it'd be good. But it's not, it's not absolutely necessary because we can hear you. And if you have questions, you can raise your hand or anything like that. Yeah, well, that's the right answer. <laughs> okay. But I mean, it would be on the left side, on the left lower side, right? The icon? The video. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, I have, oh, start the video. Yeah. So now we have both options. All right, so we're getting some, we got a good number here, but I'm still gonna wait a minute because it's just 6.30 now. Uh, Randy, do you hear me? Hello, Ed, yes, I hear you loud and clear. <laughs> okay, good, then I won't raise the volume. I'll keep it where it is. Haas. See? Yeah. yeah Margaret right. Haas. Uh, she was Anita Haas and she's dead. <laughs> That's nice. So both can't, can't be her. Don't break it down. This is Bob Tucker. Bob Tucker? Is yeah. he a teacher? He was, but I don't know if it's him. Was it Bob Tucker? Robert Tucker? It was a Bob Tucker. I go by Bob. Marty Abschultz. Bobby Hello. I'm still admitting people um, into the Zoom. You know, it used to be where everyone could come in automatically, but they must have changed some settings in Zoom and it's not allowing me to do that. Debbie. So um, I'll just give it a, another couple of minutes here. Um, Debbie Birch. Oh, that's her married name. Where are we? So I say we wait till 6.33. So two more minutes and then we'll start the show. How's that sound, Ed? Uh, that sounds good because at my pay grade, uh, I do allow for a five minute delay. <laughs> and uh, so it's all right uh, for me and my agent. That's no problem. Oh, your agent cleared it. That's good. That's good. Yeah. You know, while we're waiting, I'd like to mention, we'll mention this at the end too, but on uh, Saturday, October 16th, we're going to have a history day scavenger hunt um, for four historic places in the township. And so I'll be talking about that. I don't have the promo material just yet, but I'll get that out to everybody. So it'll be, um, you'll ha it'll be like a little, he looks familiar, a little place yeah, to go. Familiar, so you'll, you'll go visit four places in the township. 
and then um, you'll be eligible for there'll be a prize drawing. So it'll be the Lock Tenders House, the Slack Harrell House, uh, the Weatherall House, and oh, the Presbyterian oh. Church. So we'll talk about that more later, and He's, I'll email the list too when all the looks details. Familiar. Are must... you know that. So if everybody, I think we have who we're going to have. Uh, we have a good number here. So let's start now. Um, I'm Randy Marsola. I'm a librarian here at the South Brunswick Library. And with us joining me tonight, joining us tonight is Ed Belling from the, he's a town historian. And he'll be talking about the origins of South Brunswick road names. So uh, Ed, when you're ready, you can, uh, you can take it away. Okay, thank you, Randy. Uh, this is a sample of the roads in South Brunswick. We couldn't possibly cover all of them uh, in one session. And we picked out um, about uh, 20 uh, roads to concentrate on. We'll see how the time goes and how many we can cover. Uh, in between the roads that will be mentioned, uh, we are going to have a uh, a serious competition. And uh, the ground rules for this are that I'm going to name a road in South Brunswick, and you have to name the roads that the road runs into. In other words, at both ends of the road, just name the roads. Um, so if I gave as an example, a uh, new road, uh, that's a long road, so I'll say the new, new road. In other words, the newest part of it. And then a contestant would say their first name. So, Randy, you have to keep track of who's trying to give an answer, okay? I'll do my best. Okay, if you get it right, then we don't need to ask somebody else. If the person who is saying it first gets it wrong, then we go to the second person until we have a winner. Now, the one who uh, answers uh, correctly for most of the roads, uh, more than anybody else, they win two things. The first thing is the uh, manuscript copy, the paltered manuscript copy of The Good Soldier, which is based on the diary of Private Kurt Vores. Uh, goes back to 1776. Uh, and this is about South Brunswick's participation in the Second Battle of Trenton. Uh, it is my uh, uh, manuscript copy uh, that I wrote based on the diary, and I'm going to autograph the manuscript for the winner. The second prize, we're going to uh, submit your first name uh, to the uh, Public Works Department uh, with a strong suggestion from Randy to name a new road in South Brunswick after you. Uh, so this is a double prize competition. Just wanted to tell you about that. Okay, Randy, I'm ready for the first uh, road. Are you all set? Yeah, we're all set. Um, so we're starting off here, and we're going to be talking about Route 27. And I just have um, some brief information about what Route 27 is, you know, historical information. And then, as I mentioned before, we have some of the, the prettier houses along Route uh, 27. So you can just take it away and talk about 27, and I'll be switching the screens back here so that people can see some of the nicer, um, nicer homes along 27. Okay, yeah. sounds like a plan. Okay. Uh, the, the reason that we start with Route 27 is because uh, this is probably the first road that involves uh, the area we now know as South Brunswick Township. Uh, the Route 27, before it was called that, had many names. Uh, it was called the Assam Pink Trail at one time, the Old Indian Trail, the Upper Road, the King's Highway, the Dutch Trail, Lincoln Highway, and the Main Road. Uh, so this is a, a road that had been called many different things over Lincoln, time. Huh? 
Okay, now, um, uh, Route 27, going back to its formative state, uh, went from a Native American path uh, we, to we uh, we a said road in, in which was the border between Somerset oh, County and Middlesex County. Now, Somerset County and Middlesex County, that borderline uh, varied depending on the whims of the road. And, uh, on, and in some instances, if you know about the old road, which is off of Route 27, Route 27 actually went on the old road, and uh, it was a uh, different configuration to what it is now. Uh, there were farmers uh, along the route who used to take parts of the road and consider it their own property. Uh, so it wavered back and forth. And if you go back early enough, actually Somerset County had part of Middlesex County, so it had both sides of what we know now as Route 27. Okay, um, this uh, road uh, was used by Native Americans as uh, their path, Assumpink, uh, to go from the Raritan River down to the Delaware River. Uh, when the uh, European immigrants came along, and we're talking about uh, the 1600s, let's say around 1650. The, uh, the uh, path at that time was about one rod wide, and uh, so enough for a horse to, uh, to move easily along it, uh, say about uh, five and a half feet wide. Oh, wow. uh, now, um, if you get up to uh, the 1660s, uh, this is when you had the first taverns along the route. Again, you're talking about a very narrow road, not wide at all. Uh, John Innian, who ran a ferry in New Brunswick, uh, he decided to uh, get more traffic and get more uh, people using his uh, business. Uh, he decided on his own to improve the road down to Trenton. Uh, so he made improvements uh, in the 1680s. Trees were cut down, logs filled in gullies and across streams, and, uh, of course, it was widened. It became the primary post route uh, okay. in 1700, and there were a few post houses along the way. Uh, state wagons uh, started in 1725, and the first stage line was in 1738. That looks like uh, a what was happening was the what? King's Highway, what? later to become Route 27, uh, was going to be the main road between Philadelphia and New York going through the Jerseys. Uh, it lasted as the most important route till the early 1800s. Uh, the Trenton New Brunswick Turnpike Company uh, decided to uh, form in 1804. They wanted a straight road uh, going uh, through Jersey. Uh, this, as you may know or may not know, became Route 1. And this became the main competition for our Route 27. Uh, the Trenton New Brunswick Turnpike uh, got uh, 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 lots of traffic during the War of 1812 in the shipping of military supplies uh, uh, during that war. Uh, when, when you get to the 1830s, the traffic lessened because of the canal and the railroad. Uh, a recession after the Civil War uh, <coughs> cut down the number of houses that were being built along uh, the route. And therefore, progress was sort of at a stagnant uh, pace. Uh, then you have the uh, automobile coming along and truck traffic uh, uh, by the 1920s. Uh, the next big thing to happen was the New Jersey Turnpike opening in 1951 and then exit 8A, 1966. 
by the I, time of the turnpike and with Route 1, then our old Route 27 becomes a less important, less significant road, but the history of the road uh, goes on. And it is a very historical route, one that Washington traveled on at least a half a dozen times, uh, one that the British used uh, to uh, go down to Trenton to fight uh, the two battles there. So uh, we have to respect uh, Route 27 for what it stands for, and uh, that's it, Randy, as far as Route 27. Did you run out of pictures? Uh, no, I was, I was doing some other things with Zoom here, trying to manage it, but I wanted to go through some of the ones we have. There's a picture of Kingston I have up here, and there's also, um, it's called the William Wood Tavern. It was... Um, it was built before 1745, and Robert Priest was one of the owners, and he was said that he was a drummer boy in the American Revolution. And this is uh, Barud, it's um, an attorney's office, and also, yeah, it's realtors, Barud Realtors. So that's another place on 27, because I just wanted to highlight some of the, some of the places uh, on the road. And the next one I have is the Daniel Bay's house in Kingston, and that's a pretty handsome house. Um, the other one, oh, the next one is the the next road we're talking about, the Cranberry South River Road. So we can go to that next. And that's what's picture okay. we'll have up here. Okay, Randy, I just have a couple more things. And then we have the first road for the competition. Uh, so I know the excitement is building. Okay. Uh, so tr try to hold your breath and uh, we'll get through this. Okay, um, so I had to do one thing, though, Ed, because it seems like we're getting uh, some background noise. I'm going to mute everyone and then unmute you and, and me. So that way we won't have to, uh, you know, worry about the noise. So just hold on one second. It should just be a second. Let me try it out here. Okay, fine. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is unmute Ed, um, and I see his name up here. I, I can ask him to unmute, but he's on a phone. So I'm going to, hmm, I don't know what I'm going to do here. This is an interesting situation. Um, he has I'm, to unmute himself. Yeah, but he's on a phone, though. I forgot. Ed's on a oh. phone. So uh, it doesn't. Randy, can you hear me? Yes, that's perfect, Ed. That's that's what I wanted oh. to hear. You're good now. <laughs> so okay, okay. Let let me just finish up. Sure. <laughs> One thing I forgot to do was mention uh, the people who lived along uh, Route 27 uh, way back uh, in the <laughs> mid 1700s. The reason I'm doing that is because. Many of these old roads have lots of the old names of like the founding fathers uh, and mothers of uh, South Brunswick. So let me read these to you. Uh, and maybe a name like a surname uh, might ring a bell. William Donaldson, Jacob Van Dyke, Jacobus Lake, Dallas Hageman, Daniel Barkelow, the widow Hoagland, and Nicholas Johnson. Those were the ones on the South Brunswick side of Route 27, uh, back when it was called the King's Highway. Okay, now, Randy, we're ready for the uh, first uh, road of the competition. Are you ready? Yeah, the next one I have up here is the... Um... No, 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 for the competition, not the next road for the... Okay, talk. so okay, yeah, so take it away. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I have a picture for it, but go ahead. Okay, no, no, you don't need a picture for these. Okay. These, these, these have to be visualized by the competitors, okay? okay. Remember, they're going to give you their first name if they know the answer, if they think they know the answer, and then you decide who goes first. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go. The name of the road is Black Horse Lane. Tell me the two roads that Black Horse Lane connects. 
Bill, Route One. Route One and Dean's Lane. And Randy, did somebody mention their name? Uh, well, Dale. no. Who said Dale. Route One? Was the young, who was the young lady that said Route One and Dean's Lane? Gail. Gail Weber. Gail. Okay. Gail, okay, Gail wins. Now, you got to mention your first name so we can differentiate the people who are guessing. Okay, so, Gail, I'm, I'm you're in the lead. You have one point, and we'll save the next one for after the Cranberry South River Road. You're talking about Lowry's Road? Randy? Uh, yeah, it's. I have a picture. Yeah, the next – you want to go to the next slide? Uh. Well, I, I have Cranberry South River Road, uh, formerly known as Lowry's Road. Yeah, I have Cranberry South River Road, and I have, it's a picture of David Williamson's Tavern. Okay, um, good. That's good. That's good. Okay, so we're ready. Let me start talking about that. Um, this road uh, is at the other end, the eastern end of South Brunswick Township whereas the Route 27 Kings Highway was the western end. Uh, and there is uh, some competition between the two roads. The reason that this road was originally called Lowry's Road, because he was a governor of uh, the Jerseys. At the time, we had an East Jersey and West Jersey. We had two capitals. We had Burlington and we had Perth Amboy. And Governor Lowry had the idea of connecting the two capitals as best as possible. And so a road was developed connecting the two capitals. Uh, and of course, to get to Perth Amboy, you had to go from Burlington to South Amboy at the time known as Radford's Ferry and ferry across the Raritan to Perth Amboy. And that was your connecting route for the two capitals. Uh, eventually, this road, when it uh, finally became Cranberry South River Road, went from two rods wide to four rods wide. And remember, a rod is five and a half feet, so you can imagine the widening of the road and the labor that it took to do that. This road, Lowry's Road, was also called the Old Stage Road because it was supposed to compete for stage traffic with uh, the Kings Highway Route 27. Um, the uh, people who lived along this road, uh, and we're talking about uh, in the very early days, were as follows. James L. Ferris, Christopher Keogh, John Vanderhoff, Gilbert Perrine, Mrs. Henry Stultz, Harriet Ferris, and Thomas Pearson. Uh, this would be in the uh, latter part of the 1800s. Uh, this road had post riders on it in the 1680s and was give, giving a, a, a stiff competition to Route 27, which eventually won out as far as the post was concerned. And uh, this was actually a more important route than Route 27 in the early part of the 1700s. But by 1750, uh, Route 27, the King's Highway, had won out. And the old stage road, Lowry's Road, became secondary to Route 27. Okay, Randy, I'm all finished with the second one. Okay. And we're ready for the second road of the competition. Okay. Now, this is a tricky one. Listen carefully. Remember, you want the connecting parts at both ends of Mark Drive, M A R C. Mark Drive. Who has the answer? Bobby, Ridge Road. Ridge Road. Ridge Road. How many times did you say Ridge Road? Yeah. Twice. Twice, because it's an arc, and it starts at Ridge Road and ends at Ridge Road. Excellent. Who was that, Randy? Is it Bobby? And Bobby, what's your last name? Binder. Binder? Okay, Bobby Binder. 
Okay, I'm just writing down the uh, first names. Because okay. remember, uh, we're going to recommend that a street in South Brunswick be named after the person's first name. Okay, so now we're ready for the third one. This would be George's Road, Randy? Yep, George's Road. So I have a, a number of houses on George's Road. Um, I okay, have the, and I have I have a number of uh, historical things about George's Road. So let's roll with it. Okay, so um, let me just I'll narrate what I have here, and then you could talk about um, you know the historical things that happened on the road. I have uh, the Weber House on George's Road, and there's a picture of it as of what it is today. It's Orange Key Realty, and on the left we have the historical picture from uh, I guess the late 1800s. We had the Applegate House on 417 Georges. Um, yeah, so those are the two things we have. So uh, those are the two examples I have for, for um, Georges. So take it away, Ed. Okay. Uh, Georges Road uh, has been called Old Georges Road. Uh, and in the very early days, it was called George Riskerick's Road uh, because this tavern owner down in Cranberry, uh, he... Uh, colluded with uh, John Indian up in New Brunswick. He wanted more traffic coming along to his tavern, <clears throat> and he in turn would encourage the people to get to Indian's Ferry uh, to cross the Raritan River. Uh, now, this was all transpiring in the late 1600s, uh, and uh, uh, finally, uh, what happened was George Riskerick uh, developed a road that got to his inn and connected New Brunswick uh, to Cranberry. And, of course, they had to go through South Brunswick, called the South Ward uh, eventually in the 1700s. Now, uh, a lot of people think that George's road is, road is named after King George, but it's not. And there was also a uh, rumor going around that an early road commissioner uh, back a couple of centuries, George Drake, his name was used for the road, but that's not true. Uh, so George Riskerick gets credit for George's road. Now, um, the uh, people who lived along this road real early in time were as follows. Uh, the widow Mary Risley, uh, Daniel Fitch, Thomas Duell, Francis Hollinshead, Jediah Higgins, uh, Theodorus Mellet, Samuel Leonard, and Noah Barton. Now, this Jediah Higgins was another Jediah Higgins because the famous Jediah Higgins was over on Route 27 just north of Kingston. Now, George's Road was based on an Indian trail, just like uh, Route 27 is based on an Indian trail. This was called the Cross Wixon Trail, uh, and uh, what the Native Americans used it for was to get to the Jersey Shore because shells at that time uh, along the coast were an important wampum source, and so there was a lot of movement uh, from east to west along that trail. So George Riskerick basically developed uh, a Native American trail, turned it into a road. In 1875, the road was taken over by the Cranberry New Brunswick Turnpike Company, and it was actually a toll road. Now, the toll road uh, lasted until from 1875 to 1900, and uh, it was finally paved in 1900. Uh, in 1910 to 1930, uh, there was a Jitney bus route on this uh, from Heightstown to New Brunswick. And it, the Michelin Tire Company paid for the whole thing because they were testing tires uh, for this Jitney bus. Uh, in 1914, the road was paved with Warrenite. Uh, which was a type of asphalt that was developed by the Aaron Brothers of Boston. Uh, so there's a lot of experimentation with the paving of this road, and that's another interesting uh, fact about George's Road. 
Uh, I don't know if you have any pictures of the Whitlock Tavern and the Wines Hotel, which uh, was originally the Wetherill Inn uh, at Crossroads, Randy, but they were uh, landmarks along uh, George's Road. No, I don't have it in this presentation, but I, yeah, I just included these, uh, the Weber House and the um, Applegate House. Okay, that's no problem because I'm sure uh, the listeners, the viewers have been by those. Uh, well, there's only one left. The Wines Hotel is gone. Right. Uh, there's a Wawa there now. You know, progress uh, moves on. Okay, now, um, next uh, we're going to the third uh, 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 road in the competition. Are we ready, Randy? Ready. Okay, this is Catelli Road. Catelli Road. Which road is at what end and which road is at the other end? Catelli Road. It's Ridge Road and Academy Road. This is Steve Knowlton. Okay, uh, you want to give just another try. You were 50% uh, right. It's Ridge Road and Euclid Street. Almost there. <laughs> I know it's in Kingston. <laughs> okay, Randy, is there anybody else giving it a try? Um, I don't see anything in the chat just now, but you could just unmute and and let us know if anybody else wants to give it a shot. Okay, we're going to give, uh, who is it, Steve? That was Steve, yeah. Okay, we're going to give Steve half a point. <laughs> it could mean the difference between winning and losing. Uh, I have Catelli Road as stretching from Ridge Road to Prospect Street. Okay, Randy, we're ready for number four. Okay. Let's and see. that would be Ridge Road. Yep. We have, um, let me just, uh, I want to go over a few because we have really nice pictures of some of the homes on Ridge Road. So let me just, uh, I'll go through them all and just uh, then we, then you can uh, talk about the, about the road. So the first one we have here is the Stout Culver House, which is still there. This is a picture from the early 60s. It's a beautiful house. Um, and we also have the Pearson Stout House, and that's pretty recognizable. That's right around the bend in Monmouth Junction. And then this, this kid, you know, ambitiously throwing a snowball at the camera. I love that picture. Um, Murphy Funeral Home, Briggs Rowland House. And this is from a glass plate, uh, plate negative. It's uh, the Griggs House, and the house is still there. Um, and if you look really closely over here, if you zoom in on the picture, there's an advertisement because the train tracks are right in back of it. So this is, I think, the best picture that we have in the archives of the Griggs house, just because it's uh, such a beautiful, well, the picture, it's, it's a muddy picture, but it's a beautiful black and white shot um, from the 1800s. So yeah, those are the pictures. And then um, I'll, I'll scroll through these, scroll through these as you talk, Ed, but um, uh, you can take it away on the Ridge Road Okay. Uh, Ridge Road uh, was also known as the Jamesburg Road and later known as the Monmouth Junction Road. Um, it was named after a high ridge, which is located near Kingston, and it ran, the road ran from Kingston to Crossroads uh, and on, then on to South River uh, through, <coughs> uh, through South Brunswick. Now, the road... Uh, uh, connected uh, Barefoot Brunson, who was a, a noted uh, uh, a roguish type of sheriff for Somerset County, and, uh, and, and his son continued the tradition in Middlesex County. Uh, he lived on the other side of the Millstone River. Uh, so from that source, uh, it, it uh, ran uh, through South Brunswick uh, and, of course, crossed George's Road. Uh, this also may have been a Native American trail, uh, but the name has been lost uh, in history, uh, and we don't know that for sure. Uh, it was a gravel road uh, probably to the uh, end of 
the 1920s. Uh, then in the 1930s, it was uh, paved with concrete and asphalt. Um, this is the road in South Brunswick that most closely follows the fall line. And the fall line is the separating uh, line between the Piedmont region in New Jersey and the upper coastal plain. Uh, so it's significant uh, because of the, the land that it, it follows as it wends its way through South Brunswick. Um, the uh, names of people uh, along the way uh, and this would be from Mapleton Road, which we'll talk about later, uh, would be John Hollingshead, Daniel Woodmancy, Aaron Longstreet, Daniel Culvert, Jediah Stout, John Rule, and of course the Lawrence family, headed by Thomas Lawrence uh, of Longbridge Farm fame. Okay, Randy, we're all set on that. Okay, so you're you ready to do the contest for, for Ridge? Of course, of All right. course. All right. <laughs> okay, uh, this is a road near and dear to my heart because I used to live on it till they tore my house down. <laughs> this is Constable Road. Where, where's one end of it and where's the other end of it? What roads? Denise, I, this is Donna. Uh-huh. Uh New Road. At Wheeler Road. That's New Road. New Road and? Wheeler um, Road. Randy, did you hear that? I didn't hear the second one. I, I couldn't quite hear the second part. Is New Road and which road? Wheeler Road. Wheeler. Wheeler. Yep. She is correct. What's her first name again? Margit. Did um, you get that, Randy? It's Margit, right? Margit? Yes. Okay, yes. got it. Margaret? Uh, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, Margit, it says. Yeah. Okay, got it. Very good. So we have, we have a stiff competition here. This is really great. Okay, <laughs> now, uh, are you ready, Randy, for the next road? Yep, I'm ready. And let me guess, you have Mapleton Road? I hope so. It should be there on the slide. <laughs> <Let me see. laughs> well, I hope so, too. Uh, and this is short and yes. sweet. I don't know how many pictures you have. I only have uh, one picture for Mapleton Road, but it's an interesting place. It's called the, the Matthias Van Dyke House. Yes, yes, yes. Um, okay. Okay. Um, uh, Seal Leadham and I did a lot of research on the uh, Van Dyke House. It's one of the first stone houses in the colonies. A lot of people don't realize that. It is now um, uh, across the border in uh, Plainsboro. Uh, but at the time, it, it used to be uh, considered uh, South Brunswick territory. But anyway, Mapleton Road... Uh, ran from the William Scudder Mill to the King's Highway. So this is a road that was essential uh, for people who had to get to the mill, which was along the Millstone River. And um, it, it, ran, it also uh, ran uh, by extension to Cranberry. So it was a way to get between Kingston and Cranberry. Uh, it was named after uh, people in the Maple family. I have one first name, uh, but I believe that uh, this uh, Maple that uh, Mapleton Road was named after preceded the one that I have. Uh, the one who the road was named after, he ran a school, a private school by the mill, and that's what he was known for. In the early 1800s, these are the people living along Mapleton Road. Isaac Scudder of the Mill fame, Benjamin Maple of the Maple family, Anton Blackwell, Henry Van Dyke of the Van Dyke family, John Van Dyne, and Isaac Story. And that's what I have on Mapleton Road. 
Okay, Randy, are you finished with pictures of uh, Mapleton Road? Yeah, I just had the one, Van Dyke House. Okay, Van excellent. So now we're on to this road. What you have to do, remember, is one end of the road and the other end of the road. This is a hidden secret road called Dean's Pond Lane. Dean's Pond Lane. Gorgeous Road and Route 1, but it's kind of disconnected. Okay, I'll give you half credit. What's the other road that leads to Route 1? <coughs> it's a Georgia's Road and 130. No, you're going the wrong way. How about Dean's Lane? George's the, and Dean's? No, the, the person who named it first had George's Road, uh, but I wanted to give him a chance to name the other road. He said it, it eventually leads to Route 1, but what's Henderson? the road that... Uh, what? Henderson Road? No. No, no. The River Road. Bridge. River Road. It's got Dean's Pond in it, but it's something else. I'll figure out what it's called. Uh, Dean's Pond Road? It's just north of the McDonald's on the right. I think that's what it's called. <laughs> Randy, are you controlling the contestants? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I have nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to give half credit to the uh, gentleman who spoke first. Who, who? What's the first name? Alfred. Alfred, okay. Alfred. How about Major Road? You got it, but too late. <laughs> okay. It's Gorgeous Road and Major Road are connected by Dean's Pond Lane. And uh, it's worth an adventure to go and find that road and take it, see where it takes you. Uh, okay, I'm giving half a point to Alfred. Okay, Randy, we're ready for the next one. Okay. So the next one is. Uh -oh. Heathcote? Yeah, but it's not painting up. I don't know what's wrong with the connection here. It's Heathcote, and I have a picture of it, but it's not showing up on the screen, which is funny because I just had the, uh, maybe I'll stop the share and try it again. Yeah, because these don't load up, and that's a little bit troubling. I mean, the connection is okay. Um, I didn't have a fantastic picture. I just had a picture of it looks like an historic house, but let me, right. um, let me just try to stop the screen share for a minute and then connect back. So just, let's give it a second. Okay, uh, do you no, want me no. to talk while you're doing that? Sure, you could do that. Yeah, I don't have much to say. Uh, Heathcote is one of those connecting roads. Uh, it, uh, in the early days, uh, was a two rod road. Uh, so it, it, and a two rod dirt road at that. Um, and we're talking about in the 1770s. And it ran from uh, Route 27, the King's Highway, uh, down to Long Bridge Road. So it was a connecting road between those two. Uh, and it ran from William Van Tilburg Stable in Kingston through the lands of William and John Sunderland. This was uh, a road that obviously needed to be used by farmers who wanted to cut through, and uh, uh, so it, it became a, a, a connecting road. Randy, that's all I have on Heathcote. Okay, we got the picture back just as you finished, but that's okay. Perfect. Um, <laughs> okay, Your so... Your timing is impeccable. <laughs> Hold on a second. Let me get a... The full screen here. Well, something tells me I shouldn't have done that because. All right, maybe it's okay. So the one after Heathcote it should be Culver, right? Yes, but we, of course, we have the competition, Randy. Do not okay. forget. I'm getting all <laughs> okay. discombobulated with my technical difficulties here. Okay, so, okay. 
<laughs> no so, okay. problem. No problem. We'll just deduct it from your pay. It won't be okay. a problem. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be docked. <laughs> so okay. go ahead with your now, contest. <clears throat> I need the two roads at the ends of Miller Road. Miller Road. What are the names <laughs> of the two roads? Bobby. Broadway and Friendship. Broadway. Excellent. Who's, whose name goes with that? Who said Broadway and Friendship? Al, I, Alfred again. Bobby Alfred. Yes, but I think some ladies said it at the same time I did it. Yep, I did. Uh, okay. Uh, so yeah. it's a tie and we'll split the points. What's That's the lady's fair. name? That Bobby. was Bobby. Bobby. Okay. Bobby? Yeah. Okay, so Bobby gets a half and Alfred gets a half. Shouldn't Google Maps get a half? My <laughs> cheat, I ride my bicycle all over South Brunswick. Excellent, excellent. Uh, okay, now we're ready for Culver, right, Randy? Okay, yeah, Culver Road, I don't have anything interesting. I just have an aerial shot from Google Maps that I grabbed. And it, I can just tell you, it looks very rural. There's a lot of trees and uh, right, not many houses. Right. right. Yeah, Culver Road is a farmer's road. Uh, it eventually became two rods wide. And it was uh, dedicated in the 1780s. Uh, at one time, it was part of Friendship Road and Old Dayton Plainsboro Road. And Culver Road ran from Crossroads to Josiah Shelton's Mill. So that means that the farmers were using it to get to the mill. Uh, it was named after a Culver, but history has not uh, retained the first name. Uh, and it's interesting that, uh, a point we have to make, in the old days, uh, a lot of roads, if they weren't named after a geographic setting, they were named after somebody, and they used their last name, the surname. And it's interesting, in this day and age, uh, the builders of houses in South Brunswick are using a lot of first names, uh, relatives and so forth. The case in point that Paul Wiener brought to our attention, uh, uh, Oakey Drive, uh, was uh, named after the builder, or oh, named after Oakey Brook, I'm sorry, and the builder, all the houses around there, uh, named after members of his family, but he only used the first names. Uh, so that seems to be a modern trend. Maybe we should go back and remember some of these people that haven't had a road named after them. Uh, the people who lived along Culver Road, there was Robert McGee, John Wetherill, Matthew Rue, uh, Samuel Mershon, Richard Scott, Thomas Mershon, and Robert Mershon. And that's what I have on Culver Road, Randy. Okay. So we're ready. Okay, we're ready for the, the heated next phase of the competition. Okay, and we're down to the eighth one. Okay, this is uh, a modern road, uh, and we have all modern people listening and watching, so this should be easy. Royal Oaks Road. It goes between Henderson and Black Horse Lane. Okay, almost right. Route, Route one, 1 and Black, Black Horse, Horse Lane. Lane. I meant, Route yeah. 1 and Black Horse Lane. <laughs> Yes, that's right. Okay, and who was the gentleman who said that first? Dave. Well, Gail Dave. said part of it. I said the first part. Right, right. So okay, I'll okay. yeah, split the point. So we'll give you a half a point. Dave will give you a full point. Okay. Okay, and who was the young lady who said uh, for half a point? That was Gail. Yeah. Gail. Okay. Gail. Okay, this is a fierce competition. You know, Randy, I have a question about that, though, because Royal, the Royal Oaks development, that road is actually um, called Henderson, and it goes from, uh, what did I say? It's Route 1, I'm sorry. Royal Oaks Boulevard, is that part, of, isn't that Henderson also, or is that off of Henderson? No, Henderson's on the other side of Route 1. <clears throat> 
Okay, they don't consider the other thing, Henderson, also? We're no. 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 Okay, no. sorry. Um, okay. I just looked now it up on ready. Google Maps, and Google Maps shows it Henderson on both sides. Oh. So okay, whoever well, said that is right. It's now labeled as Henderson on both sides, folks. Oh. I just okay. looked. Okay. Well, that must mean that the 1774 map I'm using is out of date. <laughs> um, okay, so we'll give Gail a full point. Oh, Gail. <laughs> uh, but Dave keeps his point also. Randy, you would agree, right? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. What's the next one, Randy? The next road is Sand Hills Road. Um, Sand and, Hills Road, okay. The picture I have is it's this building is the Sand Hills School. It's not a school anymore, but the building is still there. So when you turn right off of Route 1 North and go past the Burger King, on your left, you'll see this structure. And it was, uh, it's the Sand Hills School. So um, it's still there, but if you want to go visit it. So, okay, Ed, take it away. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Sand Hills Road was originally called the John Beekman Road. Uh, in the 1800s, very early 1800s, uh, they started calling it Sand Hills Road. Uh, obviously, it's because of the uh, uh, geologic uh, feature, an odd feature, and that's Sand Hill. And Sand Hill is supposed to be the highest elevation in South Brunswick. Do we know um, the elevation? Uh, yeah, I have it written somewhere, uh, but I don't have it written in these notes. Uh, but we're talking about, well, you'd have to be sea level. So you're talking about hundreds, but I'm not sure how much uh, above sea level. Um, this uh, road ran or uh, runs from six mile run. Uh, in other words, Route 27 to the road leading to George's Road. Uh, it was widened from 33 feet to 60 feet uh, in 1959 through 1961. Um, the names of the people who were there back when it was first named Sand Hills Road are as follows, Albert Hoagland, Christopher Beekman, William Barkalo, Peter Nevius, Isaac Slover, and Cornelius Barkalo. There's some pretty well-known names in there that are associated with the road. Okay, Randy, that's what I have for Sand Hill. Um, okay, Sand Hills, just for the record, is 253 feet above sea level. Okay, good. Yeah, I, a couple of hundred. That was that was that was, uh, was good. That's what I remember. You're right. You're right. Okay, now uh, next in the competition, we move to Stanley Road. Stanley Road. Bobby, um, uh, George's Road and um, Kingston Road. Okay, good. I'll take it. It's Kingston Lane. That's good, Bobby. That's a full point for you. Okay, uh, Randy, what's our next road? The next road is Raymond Road, formerly Gulick Road. And uh, what I have here is it's a, it's a really nice looking house, but I have, um, it's now the Red Maple Farmhouse. It was built in 1740 by uh, Joaquin Gulick, um, and it was a stop on the Underground Railroad. And fugitives went to New Brunswick from there and to New York City. So it was uh, a stop in the Underground Railroad. And you can go visit it today if you drive by on Raymond Road. Okay. Okay, Randy. Um, yeah, it was originally known as Gulick's Road, and that was uh, a well-known family on the road. Uh, but the Raymond family was also well-known. And eventually, in 1808, uh, the road was named Raymond Road. Uh, this was built as a connecting road for the Straight Turnpike. Uh, that involved the Princeton-Kingston Turnpike and the Trenton-New Brunswick Turnpike, 
that you know as Route 1. Um, the, the road or the path itself dates back to 1745. And uh, even before it was known as Gulick's Road, it was known as Longstreet Road. So you have three well-known families that were attached to the same road by name, one superseding the other. Um, the uh, thing that uh, you didn't mention was that uh, the road where the underground, uh, the house along the road where you had the Underground Railroad, this was also a house that uh, hosted Hessian soldiers during the Revolutionary War. Uh, the reason being that uh, when uh, 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 the British were in Princeton getting ready to march down to Trenton to try to uh, defeat Washington, there were too many soldiers in Princeton, and Princeton couldn't house them all. So they spread out. You had uh, British soldiers uh, along Mapleton Road, uh, in the Van Dyke House especially, and uh, you had Hessian, Hessian soldiers. Uh, and and uh, some of them were in, uh, in the house that you mentioned, Randy. Okay, okay, we're all set on Raymond Road. All right. Okay, and the competition moving swiftly along. Uh, we're now uh, going to deal with uh, la, la, la. Hay Press Road. Hay Press goes Hay from uh, Friendship to George's. Excellent. And who is that? Gail. Gail. Okay, Gail, that's a full point for you. And Randy, we're next ready for what road? Can I, um, I have a question. Can I ask a question about sure. this uh, Raymond Road Gulick? Is anyone living, is it occupied now or what is it? Uh, you Maybe mean just the picture that's up on the screen right now? Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's like a bed and breakfast, I believe. It's the Red Maple Farmhouse. I, I think that you can, um, you know, you can spend the night there. So I think it's a B&B &B, from what I understand. Ed, do you know anything more about it? Yeah, I, I I believe the people who run the bed and breakfast live oh, there isn't. also. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, it is occupied. They have to uh, adhere to the uh, historical uh, preservation rules and regulations for the house. In other words, they they can't alter it uh, without getting approval, and uh, so it keeps its distinguishing features. So as you drive by, it looks very colonial. So it's a, a bed and breakfast in South Brunswick. I didn't even know he had them. Okay. <laughs> oh, and yeah. We, South Brunswick oh. has everything. You just have to look for it. Okay. And then I had one other question about that little house, the Sand Hill School. Uh -huh. Is that used anymore for anything? It's a home. Yeah, it's a residence. It's a home. Okay. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Sure. Right. Okay. Uh, Randy, we're ready with Dayton Fresh Ponds. Yep, here we go. Um, I have a very uninteresting Google sh aerial shot of Dayton Fresh Ponds, <laughs> but you can tell that it's very rural. There's uh, a trees, a lot of trees, a few fields, and uh, farm areas. So it's not residential from the shot that I took here, at least. Right. Yeah, this, this was a rough area uh, land-wise because you're talking about uh, encroachment by Pigeon Swamp. And to show you how bad it was, this road was originally called Beaver Dam Road. And the beavers used to dam up the stream. And uh, when uh, it was uh, uh, raining and uh, they had flooding and so forth, uh, the stream would overflow and the uh, area would be inundated with water. Uh, so there, yeah, this, you're right, Randy, this was a rough area. Anyway, uh, the powers that be decided to put a road two rods wide through there, and it was mainly because of the mills. You had Van Pelt's mills, and uh, this uh, and and uh, people from, even from Spotswood and South River were coming to these mills. Uh, so the the road became an important uh, road for the farmers. Uh, Samuel Combs actually opened up a distillery along this road. And uh, the people who live there uh, in the area, these are the names, uh, James Parker, Ruluf Van Arsdalen, 
Uh, Thomas Weatherill's brickyards were located there. Uh, there was a tavern run by a Gulick. Uh, you also had uh, William Rue, Henry Van Dyke, uh, Daniel Davison, Samuel Cox, Nathaniel Applegate, Garrett Van Arsdelen, Benjamin Griggs, and William Cordelieu. So there were uh, quite a few interesting people along this road. Okay, Randy, I'm all set on that. Okay. We're ready. And uh, the competition is really heating up. So let's see what we have. Uh, da, 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 da. Number yeah. 11. Ah, uh, this is a, a road that was made famous by um, uh, some musical talent in South Brunswick. This is Jolene Road. Jolene Road. Kendall Park. You have the region of Kendall South Brunswick Park. that Jolene is located in. How about the two roads at the ends of Jolene? Springdale and Kendall. Excellent. And what's your first name? Maureen. Maureen. Okay. We have lots of competitors tonight. This is great. Okay, Randy, you're ready for what road? Um, next up is Die Road. Die Road or Day Road. Uh, you can pronounce it either way. Uh, did you have anything to, to say? I always get corrected when I say I, mean, I always thought it was Die Road. But then, uh, you know, well, I because Day Road, different... it's Die Road, it's Die Road. So which, which one, which is historically accurate, you know? Well, that's the problem. I would say that Day Road is probably more accurate. The, the problem is the spelling. You know, the spelling back in colonial times was horrendous. And several people in the family spelled it D-Y-E. And that's where you get the Dai uh, pronunciation. Well, okay. I think there's still members of the family still Yes, around. there are. Yes, them. Yes, them yeah. The have, yeah. This Can is I Donna. interject, please? Yeah, this is Donna. I have a story to tell. My mother's maiden name was Di. And when she was in elementary school, the teacher called her last name Day. And she said, no, it's Di. And she slapped her. Oh. And it, it, depend, it depends upon, I actually used to work with somebody, one of the Di family members who is now deceased. Mm -hmm. It depends right. on what part of the family. Right. There was a French section or French part. But my mom grew up in South Brunswick in the 30s. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. George Dye, who was the bus driver. Okay. And, mm -hmm. which, and that's how they pronounce his name, Dye. Mm -hmm. But they and Dye were both being used. But again, depend upon what part of the family right. they came from. But yeah. she always Gordon used Dye, Dye, used Dye, Dye though. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah. Okay. So that's uh, yeah, to uh, tie this all up, and I thank you for your contributions. Uh, the, on the maps, the road is D-E-Y, uh, and, and so uh, we have to stick with that. Now, as far as your pronunciation of that, uh, you could still go with die. Uh, but this is a two rods wide road. Uh, this stretched from Plain Tavern uh, to Crossroads at Richard Scott's. This was back in the early 1800s. Uh, and John D.E.Y., his house was also connected to this road. Uh, and there were lots of dies or days uh, along this road. Uh, you we also have in the 1800s, you have John Day uh, or Die, and you have uh, Rune Day or Die. Now, obviously, it's named after a family which uh, had lots of members in it. Uh, now, people who owned land along this road included Richard Scott, John Wetherill Jr., John Dye, or Day, Vincent Dye, Nehemiah Dye, Rune Dye, John Van Hise, John Wyckoff, and Thomas Trexton. Um, interesting side note. Here's another Day or Die. This is Elias. Uh, for the town of South Brunswick, 
he was allowed to purchase an oak and iron road scraper. Uh, this was to smooth out the road because the dirt roads uh, back in the in the 1800s uh, were really bad, filled with ruts and and uh, uh, puddles, et cetera, et cetera. So an oak and iron uh, road scraper was an important device, of course, pulled by a horse. And he paid the exorbitant price at $10 for this device. And it was a welcome sight to see him coming along trying to smooth out some of the roads. Okay, Randy, I'm all finished with Day or Die Road. Can I ask a question about that? I'm sorry. Is this the same Day Road in Plainsboro? Uh, yeah, I think it stretches there. Yeah. Yeah, it okay. goes into Plainsboro. Yep. It goes into, okay. Yeah, it does. I pass that sometime. Okay, thank you. Okay, now let's see. We're ready for... Ah, okay. Now we have to go to a far corner of South Brunswick for this one. And it's interesting. It's ironic that I bring it up now. This is Rowland Road. Rowland Road. Bobby, it's Day Road and Broadway. Excellent, Bobby. You have it. Okay. Uh, Bobby is doing very well. Okay, Randy, uh, what's the next one? The next one is Finnegan's Lane. Finnegan's have... Lane. Okay, mm -hmm. did you have anything to say or you want me to just go into No, it? on this one, I just have a boring uh, Google aerial shot. Nothing okay. interesting. <laughs> I see okay. a warehouse, though. I see a warehouse. <laughs> well, well, those those aerial shots by Joseph Boring are, are really interesting if you look at them close enough and long enough. Uh, you got to give credit to Joe Boring for those. <laughs> Any anyway, uh, Finnegan's Lane was another two rods wide road uh, dedicated in 1820. Uh, at the time, it was totally in North Brunswick because that border hadn't been decided yet. Uh, so technically, when it started, it was a North Brunswick road. It was formerly known as Bodine's Lane, hmm. and um, it widened uh, to four lanes in 1987. So it came a long way from those old days. Uh, there was a petition for sidewalks. That was led by Bene Tikva, and uh, uh, so improvements were made. Uh, crosswalks and lights were added in 2016. So we tend to look at Finnegan's Lane as a modernized road, a connecting road, of course. And uh, back in the old days, uh, when you didn't have all those improvements, the people living there were Enos Ayers, John Van Cleef, Simon Addis, Henry D. Traphagen, and John Hulick. That's what I have on Finnegan's. I have a question because Finnegan's Lane also comes off of 130, but it doesn't connect. There's Finnegan's Lane between 27 and 1, and then if you're coming on 130 from Davidson going to George's, there's another Finnegan's Lane. There's a light right across from Davidson. But they uh -huh. were supposed to years ago connect a hundred years ago, and they never connected it. Yes, and that that that, that has happened. Uh, uh, I like when I gave Black Horse Lane. Supposedly there was supposed to be another part of it on the other side of Route One. <coughs> uh, so yeah, you you get that. And uh, okay, now we got to move along to let's see number. Okay, we did that one. So now we got lucky number 13 here. Welcome Farms Road. Welcome Farms Road. That goes from Ridge Road to, um, oh, it's in uh, that development. I don't know. Ridge, I know it starts at Ridge and it goes to Sessions. Okay, now I heard the other part from another person. So yeah, this could be a half point uh, thing here. The young lady said Ridge Road. Uh, what was your first name? Gail. Gail. Okay, that's a half a point. 
And who's the gentleman who said uh, Junction Pond Lane? Steve. Steve. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, Randy, we're ready for the next one. What do you have? The next one is Stouts Lane. Stouts Lane. Okay. Anything to say about this or you want me to jump right into it? Uh, no, it's not. I don't know about this house, but it does look historical. It's a, it's a nice house on Stouts Lane, um, but it looks like it's probably from, I'd say, uh, maybe the early part of the 1900s. I don't know, but it's a cute house, but that's all I have as far as pictures. I don't know whose house it is or what significance it is historically. Okay. Okay. Uh, Stout Slay was dedicated in 1821, and it ran from the Trenton, uh, New Brunswick Turnpike, which would be Route 1 to Ridge Road. Uh, it was named after uh, possibly a mayor of uh, the, of the uh, township, uh, uh, and this is we're talking about in the 1890s. Uh, so it probably had an earlier name. Uh, the two people I have are Arnold F. Stout, who was mayor in 1895 and 96, and then F. W. Stout, who was mayor in 1897. Uh, the uh, road itself runs through the land of John Stout and William Longstreet, uh, so that's where the name probably comes from, John Stout. Uh, and uh, it, it runs to uh, what was Longbridge Farm and the land of John Rule. That's what I have on Stout's Lane, Randy. Okay. Okay. Now let's see. Uh, we have uh, next one, Richmond Road. Richmond Road. What are the roads at the ends of Richmond Road? Stout Lane? Sil what? Stout Lane, one of them? Randy, did you hear that? Someone asked if Stout Lane was one of them? No. Right. Richmond Road. Is that in Kendall Park as well? It is in Kendall Park. So Kingsley and Kingsley, I think. No, that's incorrect. Dam. <laughs> no, there is no dam along that road. Uh, it's just a right straight road, no impediments. I can't place Okay, it. time is running out. Does anybody want to take a guess? Richmond Road. Constable? You're getting warm, but that's not it. It's a good guess, though. How about New hey, Road? Chris? Off of New Road? Off of New Road, yes. That's one end. What about the other end? Not a clue. <laughs> okay, that's half a point. And what's your first name? Gail. Gail. Okay, Wheeler Road was the other uh, road. Okay, Randy, what do you have next? Road Hall Deans? Yeah, I have Road Hall, uh, Road Hall Dean's Road, but I also have a really nice picture of the Road Hall School from, I would say, about 100 years ago or so. So it's a, it's a, it's a great picture, and I just wanted to show everybody uh, one of the great photos we have in our archives. Okay. But yeah, take it away. Okay. Um, this is another uh, road that uh, challenged uh, Pigeon Swamp. And it was formerly known as Pigeon Swamp Road. Uh, some people call it uh, Dean's Road Hall Road. Other people call it Road Hall Dean's Road. Uh, and it goes from the Cranberry South River Road uh, up to Crossroads, which would mean Dayton. Um, the uh, uh, people who were along this road, uh, John Vandevenner, Isaac Terhune, Daniel Davison, Samuel Whitehead, Cornelius Slover, William Brown, David Gilliam, uh, Henry Terhune, Cyrenus Smock, William Pearson, George and John McDowell, and William Newton. 
Um, interesting thing was when they laid out the maps, when they dedicated this in 1829, uh, they said that the road began at a wild cherry stump on the west side of the road. Uh, that is, of course, gone now. Uh, but another interesting thing is uh, there is a famous person that I'm writing about in my latest Weatherall Mystery who is buried uh, just off this road. And I'll keep that a secret until I finish writing about it. Uh, but that's what I have on Dean's Road Hall Road, Randy. Okay. Ready for the okay. next one. Okay, we're ready for the next part of the competition here. Let's see what we have. Um, okay, Donald Avenue. Donald goes from Barbara to um, Timothy. Excellent, and what's your name? Gail. <laughs> Gail, Gail, you are storming here. Unbelievable. Finally got to my development. <laughs> <laughs> right. Finally. Okay, what's the next one, Randy? Okay, next up we have Friendship Room, and I have uh, another interesting aerial shot. Okay. And uh, Friendship Road is not it's not a surname, uh, so it stands for exactly what it's called, Friendship Road. Uh, again, this is uh, one of those farmer's roads. <clears throat> It's a two rods wide road back in 1831. And this was another road to get to the mills. In this case, Josiah Shelton's mills. And it goes from Crossroads Dayton to uh, his mills. And uh, the, um, the bridge uh, for Friendship Road uh, as far as modern history is concerned, during the Hurricane Irene, it was badly damaged, had to be repaired. This was in 2011. Uh, these are the people along Friendship Road uh, back when it was dedicated. Uh, John Lott, Jediah Applegate, William Mount, uh, Frederick Van Arsdelen, Jacob Gulick, and it also led to the Plain Tavern. That's what I have on that road. Good. Okay. Now let's see, where are we here? Uh, okay, we got to get to, ah, Corey Road, K-O-R-Y. Corey Drive goes from Finnegan's to Oakey, and it's Corey Drive. Excellent. Who? <laughs> yes, Corey Drive. I'm sorry, I made a Gail. mistake there. That's Gail. Gail. Okay. You're in my development. <laughs> okay. You're not cheating, are you, Gail? No, I live up a half a block from Corey, and I walk our development, so I know that development. Okay, that's almost a disqualification, but we'll uh, over. No, I it. really don't live there anymore. <laughs> you you should move before you get into these competitions. Oh, I've been okay, there. Okay, Randy, uh, what's your years. next road? <laughs> uh, the next slide we have is uh, Broadway Road. Okay, uh, Broadway Road is another two rods wide. Uh, this uh, is a more modern road. You're now talking about the mid 1800s. Uh, it ran from uh, east from Friendship Road along Broadway to Roland in uh, 1847 and then extended uh, from the northwest side of George's Road uh, uh, all the way to the road to Cranberry by 1856. Uh, the people living along this road were Nelson Petty, William Cox, James Buckaloo, Rune Day, John Day, Frederick Farr, Charles Day, and Nehemiah Day. That's what I have on Broadway. Randy, are you finished with the visuals of that road? Yeah, I didn't have too many. I only had the one, so we're ready. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, now the next one is Tree Farm Road. Tree Farm Road. The 
Silence is deafening. <laughs> Tree Farm Road. I'll take what is Tree Farm Road for 500. <laughs> <laughs> does, we does don't it, have 500. Um, does it come off from Sand Hill? Uh, no. Well, it comes off of Stout's Lane, but I don't yeah. know what the other one is. Something about a oh. fox. Right. Okay, Tree that, that's half a point for Stout's Lane. That is correct. Was Bobby. How about, the, how about the other end? Fox Hill, run. What, okay, what, Randy, did you hear that? It was, what was it, Fox, can you say it again, please? Fox Hill, run. Fox Hill, run. Excellent, excellent. So <laughs> the young lady, who is that, Gail again? No. no. That's Bobby. Bobby. Okay, yeah. Bobby for half. And who was the gentleman? Steve. Steve, all right. Steve. Okay, Steve for half. These half a points are adding up. This could be crucial. Okay, uh, next one I have Dean's Lane. Okay, uh, Dean's Lane, I just have a picture of um, the Dean's Garage, which is actually on George's, but it's at the intersection of Dean's Lane and George's Road, and everybody knows it. You know, it's a famous little garage, so there we go. Right. Now, uh, Dean's Lane uh, is an interesting road. Uh, we're talking about the mid 1800s. And shortly after that, uh, maybe about 20 or 30 years later, all the Deans are gone. Uh, but at the time, uh, from the 1700s up to, the, up to 1850, the Dean name was a big deal. Uh, they named the railroad station there the Dean Station, uh, and uh, Dean's Lane was named uh, uh, after the road, and uh, Dean's Pond, and so forth. So they're they're really taking up a lot of territory on the map. Uh, their main rival were the M McDowells, uh, and uh, the railroad decided that Dean was a lot easier to spell for the train station than McDowell. So then McDowell fell by the wayside as far as naming things. But and the they... Dean uh, name uh, was uh, used for several things. And didn't they and have a course... contest? Wasn't there a contest uh, yeah. involved with that? Yeah. Yeah, they, I believe they took it to a vote. Yeah. They took it to and, a vote uh, and they voted for McDowell. And then the, the, they said, no, that's too long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that. they... They uh, obviously had a poor speller, and they didn't want to take a chance, so they, they went with Dean. Uh, this, uh, stretch, this stretch is, of course, from George's Road to Route 1. Uh, the uh, difficulty uh, was the uh, underpass uh, under the railroad tracks. And uh, I have uh, interviewed people who were alive at the time that was done, and they had a real heck of a time blasting the rocks away to do that. Um, and uh, uh, every once in a while uh, back in the day, and I don't think it has happened in modern times, but a truck would get stuck uh, in, under there. Uh, anyway, the people living on Dean's Lane back uh, in the 1850s, John H. Martin, uh, George Hegel, Matthias Anderson, uh, and there was another Anderson too, but I don't have their first name. Uh, uh, but again, this was a connecting road, and it turns out to be an important connecting road. Okay, Randy, I'm all but, set with that one. I just want to tell you, a truck was stuck, because I take that road to Black. Uh -huh. A truck was stuck there about uh, three months ago. So it's still uh, happening. Yeah. yeah, there's still a, going it, on. It, it gets paid. a lot. Yeah, it costs them a lot of money when they get stuck. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's uh, still going on, and it, 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 I guess the Route 1 traffic, you know, the truckers, they think they can do a shortcut there, and uh, they, they don't realize that that uh, bridge is, is going to haunt them. Uh, they, they all of a sudden come up on it, and then they think they can get under it, and they mess up. Okay, uh, let's see, where are we here? Yes, uh, the next one. This is something I mentioned early on. Uh, so this is a tip-off, as, uh, but it's a little tricky, so be careful. Uh, this is called the Old Road. The Old Road. Is that off of, 
Route 27. What's at either end of the old road? Is that 27 and 27. Excellent. What's your name? Brian. No, it's Margie. <laughs> Margie. Margie for one. Yes. Okay. The old road. Yeah. Okay, Randy, we're ready for the next one. Okay. The next one up is an aerial shot of new road. How ironic. We go from the old road to the new road. <laughs> that wasn't and planned. Did you, have, <laughs> did you have anything to say about it? Or do you want me to just plow forth? No, you should just go ahead. It's just an aerial shot. Okay. Uh, new road is actually in three parts. And uh, the oldest part goes back to the 1860s. And that's the part that's south of Monmouth Junction. Uh, and uh, then you have the one that's through Monmouth Junction. Uh, and then you have the one uh, that you have that goes from uh, route, what now is called Route 1 to 10 Mile Run, which is Route 27. Uh, that's in the 1890s. Uh, so the newest part of New Road is the one that uh, is right off 27 going down to Route 1. Um, the, uh, uh, the names of the people uh, who are here, and there's quite a few uh, names. Uh, in the old part, you have William Rowland, Stryker Rowland, uh, the Cranberry Amboy Railroad is involved, Isaac Rowland is involved, James Hunt, Oliver Payne, Garrett Brokaw, Thomas Cahill, William Messler, John Snedeker, and Ezekiel Day. Uh, in the mid part, uh, you have John Bastido, John Rule, Samuel Rule, Margaret Ann Stout, and uh, Martin Bastido. Uh, in the new, new part, uh, uh, okay, you have Peter Cordelieu, C.H. Nevius, C.C. Beekman, Isaac Norton, James Higgins, Ferdinand Stein, Daniel Hawk, Evert Collins, Henry Johnson, and Edward Rule. Okay, that's what I have on New Road. Excuse me, when you mentioned Ezekiel Dye, that was my grandfather's name, but evidently maybe and he was born in 1900. That wouldn't have been him. Uh, no, uh, uh, well, uh, you know, the, the names are used over and over again. Yeah. Uh, you know, passed down. But uh, for that group, I have 1893 as the year. Oh, hmm. And that's not, that's not too far away. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, Randy, we're next ready for, uh, which one is it? Uh, okay, here we go. Um, I have for the competition, Stillwell Road. Well, that's all for Route 27. And Sand Hill. Okay, it looks like we split on that. <laughs> uh, who was the first one to say Route 27? Gail. Gail, okay. And who said Sand Hill Road? Maureen. Maureen, okay. Okay, good. We're all set on that. And uh, Randy of uh, Dean's Pond Road. Uh, yeah, Dean's Pond Road is next. And what I have here, uh, it's actually from a postcard, but it's uh, Dean's Pond. And you can see like the old bridge that went across it and there's a boat there. But yeah, these are the, this is uh, from our postcard collection. You can see a house off in the distance there too. It's not a right. great shot but you know it gives you an idea right uh this is interesting historically for several reasons and it's a very obscure road uh, very few people uh deign to use it uh but the dean's family cemetery is off that road uh, and it uh also is a cemetery for slaves uh, the Dean family had many slaves back in the 1700s. Um, and originally, uh, it was called the Driftway. 
and it connected uh, Georgia's Road uh, near the Aaron Dean Mill and over to uh, Major Road. Uh, it went through the property of Fred Dacre and Jacob Younger uh, around the year 1900. Now, in 1917, the township had a plan to make this a public road two rods wide. Imagine what they would have had to do with that underpass where the railroad uh, uh, track ran, ran across it. Um, the uh, owners of the property refused to go along with the plan uh, because their fences would have to be moved. And so the road was never uh, widened or improved, and it stays the same as it was back in the old days. And, Randy, that's all I have on Dean Pond Road. Okay. Can I ask a question about that? Is that road, can people walk on that? I don't even know where it is. You said it's uh, off a of major? Yeah, you know, uh, before the railroad overpass uh, uh, that gets you down to where the old high school is, the middle school now, Okay. Oh, okay, over, over on your left, over on your left, before that, before you hit the overpass, there's a uh, landscaper sign there. Uh, the Petra Fess is uh, landscaping business. They, uh, the part of their family lives back there. And uh, if you take that road, that's actually a road that you can travel by uh, car. Uh, but you can walk it too. It's an interesting walk because it's very rustic back there. And there's a and there's a pond or what is that? It's the... well, yeah, there is a Dean's Pond. Um, that that's I believe uh, I I don't know exactly where it's located, but it's associated with that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now we finish up uh, the competition with. Drinking Brook Road. Drinking Brook Road is on um, Friendship Road and Culver. Uh, that's half right. <sighs> the, cul the Culver is correct. Oh, yeah. I don't remember the name of the other street. My friend lives on it. <laughs> <laughs> Harmony Lane is the other. Okay, that's Harmony Lane. And uh, so we can give you half a point for that. What's the first name? Bobby got the first one. Bobby? Yep. Okay. Now, Randy, you need to talk while I'm adding up the score. Um, okay. I can talk about, I can talk about a couple of things. Um, you can go ahead and add. What I was going to say is this is a very, uh, this postcard isn't, isn't so interesting, but it's interesting because it's, you know, from South Brunswick. I have a whole collection of postcards that I digitized and I have them up online. And I was thinking if people are interested, I could send those along uh, uh, tomorrow. I can send the link to look at all of our postcards. So if people are interested, what do you think? Do you like postcards? Absolutely, mm -hmm. definitely. Okay. Nice. What, what people actually went on vacation in South Brunswick and sent postcards out around the world? They, it was partly that, and it was also because um, I, I think a lot of times some of them are vanity cards, some of them are businesses um, along the way, and I think like there's some great ones we have in, in uh, of of blacksmiths um, and deans, and you, you you'll see them when I send them out. So I think some of them are vanity cards, and because. And some of them are just like you said, there was something, there were people were in town, they're at the hotel and they wanted to say, hey, I'm over here in, uh, in South Brunswick. And some of the, the writing on the back is very interesting because you can see that they're close to New York and they would tell their cousin, you know, oh, I'm coming up, I'll be there in a few days, I'm bringing a friend. It just reminds you like a hundred years ago, I guess that was okay to do. But can you imagine someone writing that, you know, I'm, I'm in town, I'm coming up with a friend and I'll see you in a couple of days. Okay. So uh, it's a different, different, uh, different pace of life, I suppose. So it's, the backs actually have writing on them, on some of them, you can read them. So it's interesting. I ran the uh, people from Brooklyn came to Griggs, to Griggstown for uh, vacations in the summer and they had summer homes here. So it wasn't that uh, unusual. This was a, uh, a really uh, an area that was wonderful to uh, enjoy the summers. 
Yeah, yeah. It was like that. Um, I, I'm in Newing Township, but I'm close to uh, Washington's Crossing. And there was a whole bunch of really small houses that didn't even have heat. And, you know, you think that people just want to go there to be near the river and to cool off. So I guess it was the same way around this way. From, because I guess in Brooklyn, you know, what, what years is, were they doing that, Paul? Do you know? Uh, the development in Gregstown, I think, was in the 1920s. Okay. Yeah, I think that's similar to uh, Washington's Crossing, too. Randy, could you let us know? You, I just came in and you were talking about you're having a a tour or something of houses? We're, yeah, we're having- um, it's, Can you it's send that be, out to us? Yes, I will. I don't have the graphics to go with it. Um, and so I'm gonna send that out tomorrow, the particulars of it. it I, we have the date, it's October 16th, which is a Saturday. It's gonna be 11 from two, and there's gonna be four places in town. It's gonna be Lockhinder's house in Kingston, um, the Slack Carroll house, the Dayton Presbyterian Church, and the Weatherall House, which is owned by the township. And so each of these has their own history and there'll be people there that, that run the place, like the Slack Carroll House will have people from the Dayton Village Coalition, uh, Citizens Coalition, to talk about the significance of the house. So each place will have someone there to, to give out information. And then you have the opportunity or the possibility of winning a, a, a gift card for, um, for Target for $50. If you go into, you get put into a drawing um, and they, well, I'm going to have old time candy there too. So at least we'll have some, you know, when you stop there, we'll have some candy from, you know, yesteryear. So that'll be, you know, I was going to do old time soda, but it's too hard to do. It's heavy to ship. It's expensive and we have to keep it cool. But yeah, I'm, I'll send those details out. Uh, it'll go out to everyone, but to this group, I'll send it tomorrow. Uh, what I have on, I just wanted to let you know, because the more people, the better, you know, mm -hmm. if, we ran, if we ran out of candy, um, that would be great. <laughs> So are we supposed to be going individually or as a group? How do we um, No, it's individually for a couple of reasons. Um, everything with the, you know, with the virus is one reason, but otherwise you can go your own pace too. And that way things don't bottleneck. For example, if you're closer to uh, Kingston, you could start at Kingston and then wind your way over towards, uh, you know, towards Dayton. So um, yeah, it, it's, it's a self, Pace tour, and there's and you go to do your last stop, you'll put in um, your card. It's like a little passport. You get each place, you'll get your passport stamp. So if your last stop is a Slack Carroll house or it's a Weatherall house, you'll give your card and your passport in there, and then we'll collect it and have a drawing a week later. But yeah, all the details will be um, in the promotional. Uh, it, somebody's making the, the promotional materials, but it's not done yet. But um, I'll send you the details of kind of what I just said now, I'll send that out tomorrow um, to let you know about. So it'd be great if people would come out and uh, it's actually, I mean, I want to go on it myself. It looks interesting. I was thinking like, is, is it interesting to me? Cause I like history, but I should like people in my family and they thought it was interesting too. And they're not, you know, they're not overly interested in history, let's say. So hopefully people come out and uh, find out about your town, you know? Okay. And one last yeah. question on Raymond road, it's called the red maple bed and breakfast uh, uh yeah the main yeah actually i don't want to switch screens but that's your no, deal right yeah. i just it up it's you can if you just type in red maple farmhouse raymond road you'll get all the information about it okay, yeah thank you thanks that was pat right thank you randy that's okay so can you hear me yeah uh randy uh have you ever uh, heard of the, the CCC have any major involvement in the Route 27 construction? I seem to remember my father speaking about when he was in the CCC, how they would put him in a cattle car in the city of Trenton and take him out to Princeton or Kingston to dig the roads or dig the highways. And I was wondering if you have any perspective about that. Uh, I haven't heard anything. What years was this approximately? Oh, I had to have been. Had to have been oh, in the 30s, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Randy. Yeah. Randy. Yep. Yeah, I believe. Randy, I th I think 1933 on through the 30s, uh, you had that, uh, and basically uh, for a lot of these roads, it was the widening of the road, putting in shoulders on the road. Okay. Uh, that that was the main work that was done, and uh, obviously there was a uh, there was a definite amount of work on Route 27. 
Uh, the one that needed the most work, uh, believe it or not, was Route 1, because right up uh, in the even in the 1920s, uh, Route 1 was a mess, and it needed lots of work. So, uh, yeah, the CCC was involved in uh, 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 several roads in the South Brunswick area. And I remember Route 1 being three lanes, one north, one south, and the passing lane in the middle. Really? That in the it's a passing lane in the middle. Wow. That yeah, sounds you interesting. Pull, you had to pull over to see if there's anyone coming in the other direction. And if there was no one coming, then you then you passed. Oh. <laughs> when I was when I was a little girl, my father told me that was called a chicken lane. <laughs> oh wait, because you're playing chicken. <laughs> uh, I thought okay. it was interesting what the Von Thun family wasn't mentioned. Anywhere are they not in our town that long, long enough to have made an impact historically? I thought they owned a lot of property for a long time. Who's that? The, the Von, Von Thun family? I didn't hear it, Randy. What name? Uh, Von Thun's, like Von Thun's farm. Oh, uh, well, uh, other than the farm, no. Uh, there's no road, there's, there's no uh, creek or anything named after them. Um, I don't know why, um, but uh, that family's not alone. There are many families that uh, qualify to have something named after them, uh, and it's amazing the, uh, the the historical stuff that a lot of people were involved in. Uh, so, you know, that's something that we can look to in the future and something the historical society can do by making recommendations for the names for roads uh, because the way things are going there's going to be more roads in south brunswick and they're going to be names and i would like to see historical names rather than the first name of somebody you don't even know mm -hmm. and you will never know question is there a miller and i was thinking of the reverend miller that founded the miller church the, you know the Across from uh, the uh, the Miller Memorial Home. Yeah, yeah, the Miller Memorial. Yeah, yeah, there is a Miller Road. <laughs> yeah, there is a Miller Road. I it is not named after Reverend Miller, though. Going back to Von Thumes, their web. I, I think on their website, they only been here since 1913 or 1900. I I don't know where they <laughs> were before. We the say only that's well over 100 years ago. Yeah, but it wasn't to the 1700s or the original founders, you know. Like the, uh, I guess the Weather Hills or, or, or the yeah. Dykes, you know. Yeah, the yeah the Von Thunes came later. They were not in that uh, 1700s uh, crew. Uh, basically, the names start rolling in uh, exactly at the year 1700, um, and uh, uh, so so you, there's a dividing line. By the time you get to 1820, 1830. You have a lot of new families coming in, and the old guard from the 1700s, they're giving way to the new folks coming in. Uh, and uh, uh, But again, they came in waves, and uh, you had different ethnic groups, uh, different religions, and so forth coming in. And uh, so the 1800s was, was really an interesting time. Uh, when it was a chain, change from that colonial times uh, to uh, the times leading up to the Civil War. In the 1950s, the city slickers took over from the farmers and ran the town. Uh, yes, that's right. That, that would be like the third wave. Uh, yeah, if, if you were going to sort of uh, departmentalize it. Uh, and a lot of people coming out of the city, uh, New York City, uh, we're talking about. Um, and there was resentment uh, in the start, in the beginning. Um, and, uh, you know, it pitted the farmers on one side of Route 1 uh, with the Kendall Parkers on the other side of Route 1. Uh, and there was tension there, and I think it spilled over into the high school the old high school when it first opened up in the 1960s. Weren't they called the Pioneers, you know, jokingly? Oh, yeah, the first uh, Kendall Park uh, uh, settlers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they called themselves the Pioneers. Uh, the farmers over on the other side in uh, the eastern part of South Brunswick called them different names, but they didn't call them Pioneers. 
<laughs> ready, 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 ready. Again. Oh, I'm sorry. Are we ready for the results of the competition? Uh, yeah. Okay. I want to thank everybody for participating. Uh, this turned out to be very good. The competition was lively and close. And our winner is Gail. Oh, wow. Thank you. Hey. Six and a half points. Go, Gail. And, <laughs> and, Gail, remember there are two parts to your prize. When is the next time you're going to visit the library? Um, well, I've been doing ebooks. I'm actually on the, the library's book club, but I could go by. Okay. Well, I'm going to autograph the copy of The Good Soldier. Thank you. And I'll have that. That'll be at the reference desk. Randy will be in charge of that. Yep. And uh, I will probably get that there tomorrow. Randy, that's okay with you? That works. That works. Okay. Yeah, I'm here tomorrow all day, and you can drop Okay. Off. And, Gail, the last question, since you are the victorious winner, and most winners are victorious, uh, what do you want to name the road uh, that will carry your first name? Do you want Lane, Road, Street? What would you prefer? Uh, Lane. Wait, does that sound Gail Lane? Gail Lane. Wasn't that one of Superman's boy, uh, girlfriends? I don't know. <laughs> Wait, maybe oh, you, no, Lois, Lois Lane. Lane. It was Lois no, Lane. No, that was Lois Lane. <laughs> oh. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. Okay, so Gail Lane, that's the name that Randy and I will submit to the uh, uh, Public Works Department. Okay, uh, that's all for me, Randy. Uh, thank you. It was enjoyable. And uh, you can see my agent uh, for uh, uh, remuneration for this evening. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, I just want to thank everybody for coming out. Uh, there might be some things I send out uh, tomorrow, along with the postcards and information about History Day. And a couple of slides that we uh, didn't cover tonight, but that's okay because we're almost at two hours. So it's just about uh, another uh, historical house on 600 Ridge Road. Um, and you'll see it in your email. So thank you for coming out and thanks What's for What's the next on. one? What's the next? The next one is going to be at next month in October. It's going to be a continuation of the skirmishes in South Brunswick because we went kind of long in July and we had, we didn't finish it all. So we're going to finish up with that in, uh, in October and I'll, I'll send out a, a reminder. Yeah, okay, uh, Randy, let me, let me just say, uh, so people know, uh, the skirmish that we're going to concentrate on is uh, erroneously named the Cranberry Skirmish. It did take place in South Brunswick, uh, associated with uh, John Wetherill's property. And uh, we will be uh, starting that up uh, right at the beginning of it so that we don't lose anybody as far as the history of it. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Randy, are you available for a question, quick question? Oh, sure. Go ahead, Bill. I was just wondering, were you ever able to uh, communicate and uh, speak with John Malpey? Yes. Um, I, people, I guess a lot of people know who uh, the Reverend Malpey is, and I was able to conduct a Zoom interview with him, and I do have a copy, uh, a recording of it. So what I'm going to do, I think, is since this group is interested, I'll send the links out to that and people could look at it. I mean, he's really an interesting person. He's been in the town for well over, well, it's more than 60 years, right, Bill? Oh, yes, yes. Long time. And, uh, and he was great. Yeah. I, he's 80, I think he's 87. And uh, he did the Zoom call and he wasn't sure about it. And I talked him through it on the phone and we did a Zoom interview and he put on a sport jacket and it's high and he was just a, a delight to interview. So I'll send people out those things. Um, you know, it's up on a YouTube channel. So when I send everything out tomorrow, I'll include that too in an explanation of what it is. But thanks for mentioning that, Bill. And he has a lot of old documents that he's, uh, I don't want to say throwing away or preparing to get rid of. I mean, do you know about that? Or would you be interested in having those? I told him that I would be interested in it. But if you see him again, because I haven't spoken to him since we did the interview, which is a couple months ago, and I emailed him, but I haven't heard anything back. So if you see him, Tell him that, you know, we're interested in, in taking uh, any documents, that, any kind of historical documents, because I know he has them. Okay. So, yeah, it'd be great if you mentioned it to him. Yeah. Okay. We'll do. Keep up the good work. 
Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Ed, and thanks bye -bye. for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Bye. Good, night. Good, night. Good, night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Bye.